About a year and a half ago, the U.S. withdrew fully from Afghanistan as Kabul fell to the Taliban. And one, one of the quiet moves that has had enormous repercussions since then came from the Biden administration when they froze the entire uh, reserve reserve fund of the Afghan Central Bank and er, and encouraged uh, the European Union to do the same. So it froze $7 billion of Afghan uh, Central Reserve currency here in, at the New York Federal Reserve and $2 billion over at the EU, which created uh, a, a man-made economic catastrophe, the likes of which you know perhaps hasn't been seen since the, the potato famine in, mm. in, the, in the 19th century. Uh, under under pressure, the Biden administration finally, we can uh, put up this element here, finally allowed some of the funds to be distributed uh, to to what they called uh, a fund for Afghan people, uh, which they set up in Switzerland. Uh, that would be a way of going around the Taliban to try to release some of these funds to help to do what a central bank is supposed to do, which, uh, you know, stabilize stabilize the currency and do monetary policy. Now. A, a, a board member of the Central Bank of Afghanistan uh, is, is here to join us. This is uh, Shah Mehrabi, who has also uh, been named as the co-chair of uh, the Board of Trustees of the Fund for Afghan People, uh, which, uh, which met just, what, uh, a week or so ago, Dr. Mehrabi? Yes, it was. Uh, the meeting took place on Monday, November 21st in Geneva, Switzerland. And so, what what can you tell us about you know the out the outlook uh, for this for this fund and whether it's going to be able to meet the the challenges of the the Afghan economy that were created by the seizure of these funds? The first meeting was uh, there were not substantive issues discussed. Uh, more specifically, uh, the issue of disbursement uh, the it will be discussed in detail later on the policy and procedures. All of that is going to be in, uh, discussed in the next meeting. The first meeting uh, obviously discussed uh, mostly on uh, trying to how to launch this foundation that has been uh, structured uh, in, in Geneva. Most uh, mostly discussion was on the legal uh, legal services that are provided by uh, by the Swiss law firm, and then also to make sure that there's a high degree of transparency. Uh, hiring of an audit firm uh, was the decision was made uh, to hire a particular reliable uh, uh, firm, as well as the decision with regard to hiring someone to do the administrative work, uh, what we call the executive secretary, uh, and also uh, the issue regarding, um, uh, in, more specifically, having or constructing a committee. Uh, of Afghan uh, people, what is called advisory committee of Afghan, advisory committee mostly consists of almost all consists of Afghan. So the uh, important issue of disbursement will be discussed later on, as well as what well, we discussed also investments. So another important point was, since uh, the funds in the United States, uh, based on the decision of uh, of the investment committee of the Afghanistan Bank, they were invested uh, in the portfolio consisted of. Uh, uh, and, and instruments where it, it really uh, allowed a high rate of return to be earned, and uh, the decision was made where to invest them within the structure of BIS, and, uh, uh, and, and then make certain that we pick up those diverse, uh, at least portfolio, that will continue to allow them to uh, earn an Afghan, uh, an Afghan fund to earn a high rate of return on their so investment. In a situation like this, where the economic urgency is obviously paramount, what does the timeline look like for the Afghan people? What does the sort of disbursement and investment timeline look like going forward? Uh, having you know gone through that that first meeting, uh, when can people start to expect uh, that that to sort of happen? Okay, the, the important point here is that uh, to pinpoint that none of this fund, the 3.5 plus 36 million dollar interest that was earned on this. None of these funds will be used for humanitarian purposes. I think that's uh, that is, needs to be uh, pointed out uh, clearly because I think this there's misconception in the mind of many people that this these funds would be used for humanitarian. So it will not be used for that. The main purpose of these particular funds, as I have argued all along, is uh, to be used for 
uh, price stability and reduction in uh, volatility of exchange rate. I think those those are the main uh, reasons why these funds were uh, managed and uh, invested uh, by the investment committee, and the main purpose for why this reserve should be utilized for that, for recapitalization of the Central Bank of Afghanistan. Uh, in the meantime, uh, the, the purpose of uh, of uh, the Fund for Afghan People is to protect and preserve uh, in, uh, these funds uh, till the decision is made with regard to where should the disbursement be done. Uh, the ultimate goal is to be able to help the economy and how can the economy benefit from this particular fund, but definitely not in the area of, uh, of, of disbursement it should not be geared to in the areas where the, the burden and responsibility uh, of payment should be at the hands of the Ministry of Finance or equivalent to the Treasury in this country. So, uh, in, in sp more, more specifically, for example, payment of arrears. Uh, that was uh, that uh, the uh, interim Taliban administration already paid the, the, the last uh, arrear for the World Bank uh, in June. Uh, and now the new arrear that is due in December, that negotiation is going on so that they would, as long as they fulfill their particular obligation, then uh, this should not be any need for this particular reserve to be utilized for any other purpose but. Uh, capitalization of the central bank and for auction purposes to bring about price stability. Yeah, and just to underscore that point for, for people here, I think a lot of people, when they hear uh, humanitarian funds or humanitarian relief, they think good. That must be a good thing. Mm. But but in fact, what the, sit, the situation was such that the Biden administration, by seizing these funds, created this absolutely enormous financial catastrophe, and then to come in on the backside with a couple hundred of million, million dollars to, st to then, you know, feed people yeah. or, or do, do humanitarian gestures is, A, a little bit cynical, but B, not long-term thinking it's because, a yeah, it, it, yeah, right, it's a Band-Aid, and eventually you run out of Band-Aids, the reserve funds would be gone, and you still have the, you'd still have the the fundamental economic crisis going on, but uh, I've, I've heard you talk a little bit about how the the, the price stability crisis or, and, and some of the other volatility uh, may have been a, a, alleviating a little bit. What, you were recently in, in Kabul. What, like what, is, what is Kabul like yeah. kind of today? I, I think the, the, this is a good question. I was very surprised and happy to see uh, the, the, an environment that was safe, uh, at least uh, clearly by, uh, in, in, by, uh, by my observance, remember this is anecdotal. I didn't spend that my time. I was mostly in meeting, but at least when I when I was driven uh, to different uh, meetings, uh, I saw people uh, were very uh, comfortable in roaming around uh, without uh, uh, at least what Western media has uh, at least categorized as unsafe environment. I did not see that. I saw uh, cordial greetings by the by the police. Uh, much cordial than uh, encounter that were done uh, by the prior administration police. Uh, and then also in my hotel, I saw many women who were eating breakfast, young women, as well as during the night, many who, uh, women with their family, children and husband who were eating dinner. So those were some of the, and also obviously the girls issue needs to be resolved and the schools need to be open. Uh, and clearly I, I raised that particular issue at the Ministry of Finance, at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs at a higher level, and they uh, clearly uh, at least said that they are working on on coming up with uh, with a path to uh, open this. And uh, most of the bottleneck has been created as a result of uh, uh, at least not completion of some of the construction of new uh, uh, school building that there that's are currently underway. At least that was explanation given to me overall. And, and as far as the safety, as a chair of audit committee, as as I've said, uh, our audit department continuously had they have to go ahead and perform audits of the administration and operation of the not only the central uh, office of the Amazon Bank, but also all the uh, branches that exist in 34 provinces. They could not do that in the prior administration. Now they are freely able to go ahead and, and uh, visit all these branches and make certain that the laws and regulation of the Amazon Banks are followed 
and adhere to. So that was another important point. The other thing that I saw, there was a lot of construction was going on. I usually uh, uh, walk uh, in the morning or jog in the morning, and I was uh, pleasantly surprised to see the construction of of the uh, at least uh, the uh, of the park that was in total decay, that they were being uh, asphalted uh, what, what, you know, and work was going on, that uh, they, they were, the necessary repairs were made. And as a matter of fact, the other thing was that the bathrooms, well, which is very important, uh, 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 is that they were very clean. I was I'm trying to look at all those areas and some improve, but also the other a point that I uh, was uh, somewhat of surprise beside the park construction is the new construction that were going on. And then the old uh, uh, buildings, they were refurbished. So that's another thing that I saw overall beside the fact that uh, there was also less pollution. Uh, there were not those gas guzzlers that existed uh, and the bureaucrats who were driving them. They were they are all gone. There was a small cars of Toyotas and Hondas that were on uh, streets, but there were not as many. So there was less pollution and there was a clear sky, blue sky, that I used to see when I was a child in Afghanistan. And so, obviously, so, those those are those are some of the points. Yeah. Go no, ahead. That, no, that's really interesting. A lot of people would hear that and they would think a more uh, a healthier sort of economy in Afghanistan means a more powerful Taliban, and a more pow powerful Taliban may feel more emboldened to encroach on human rights, et cetera, et cetera. Having actually been in Kabul um, and been involved in these negotiations, where I'm sure the Biden administration has raised plenty of concerns to that effect, um, what degree of con concern should exist on that question? And it's obviously a really sad sort of situation and, and line to have to walk in general, uh, that people's economic stability um, would then be sort of seen and, and wielded in, in national security terms. Um, but, but what concerns should people have when it comes to that dynamic? Well, th this is my main, uh, uh, at least uh, professional job, is to be able to make certain that uh, Afghans do not suffer uh, from paying higher prices for necessary items that uh, they need to have access to. I'm talking about food, uh, oil, uh, sugar, uh, cooking oil, and fuel. Uh, and at this stage, while the prices have, or not at the 50, 52% that were existed a few months ago, there has been some reduction in the prices. Nevertheless, the prices are still at 27%. That is very high at a time when unemployment is extremely high. So the, 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 the Afghanistan Bank, the central bank, is... Uh, uh, one of the main responsibility of that entity is to be able to make sure that the prices, uh, stability, and the prices come, that inflation is reduced, and uh, to make uh, all items available, affordable for people. And that, uh, you know, because inflation hurts uh, most of these people, uh, the women and children, um, who cannot afford to, to pay for uh, bread, uh, and as a matter of fact, many of the bakeries, that's one thing they also noticed was that the bakeries, you saw a lot of women and children who are begging and trying to get access to a piece of bread or those who are purchasing and had the ability to purchase for them to hand out some of the particular, you know, piece of bread or loaf of bread for them. So while this can be, this will relieve some of the hardship that exists on uh, on Afghan people, I think uh, Central Bank, has, based on our uh, consultation, has done a fairly good job uh, in terms of auctioning off in the last few months, uh, almost six months, between 13 to 17 million dollars have been auctioned. That have brought some degree of stability in the exchange rate to a level where it, the exchange rate of Afghani to dollar is somewhere between 86 to. 88. Now it's uh, uh, today was uh, 88.17 and so on. So those are the way that you can uh, reduce the hardship on people, on women as well as on the, on children. Now the other part of the 
the, moving away from the DAB area, then uh, the expenditure in the area of fiscal area where the Ministry of Finance is responsible, at least they have been addressing the issue of education and health uh, quite uh, vigorously. Uh, they are uh, making the payments and uh, also they are, uh, the World Bank uh, help with regard to payment to the personnel in the health sector had resumed and that has also been instrumental in reducing some of the hardship on people. And also uh, uh, the cash inflow uh, by UNAMA uh, in the United Nations for payment of their employees and other expenses have also brought about some degree of stability in the exchange rate. And did I, did I hear you right that you said that you were talking to top officials at the, the finance minister, top Taliban officials at the finance ministry and that they're they're moving towards uh, reopening uh, schools for girls. And do they understand that as something of a kind of condition for global acceptance? Is that is that what's pushing them in that direction? Uh, the, the, the reasons for what, uh, I, I, I do not know the reasoning behind what uh, explanation was given to me with regard to the school's opening. They said that the, we have, we are in the process of trying to construct buildings because there's going to be uh, schools are, will be segregated. Mm -hmm. You will have uh, different schools, uh, segregated school for male and female. And uh, there are two obstacles they say they're confronted with. One is that they're in the process of completing construction of new building. And second, to get uh, personnel to be able to teach female separately than male. And both of these, uh, these uh, tasks takes, take time, takes time but they are moving, at least this is explanation for Ministry of Foreign Affairs, uh, is that they are moving in this uh, aggressively and trying to address this issue so the school could open. Hmm. So we'll take it with a grain of salt, but it'd be, that'd be encouraging if that happens. L last quick question. Um, what about the migration crisis? Uh, there had been reports previously of up to a million Afghans fleeing because of the economic crisis. Uh, what's, your, what's your sense of of what the outflow of migration is, is now? Well, the, the, one of the, there are many reasons for why people migrate. Obviously, the, the, there's loss of jobs uh, and unemployment is very high. And uh, that is prompting many people to go to Iran uh, and some to Pakistan. And Iran has been uh, actually sending them back. So there hasn't been uh, clearly uh, uh, a smooth flow of uh, migrant to to uh, to reside in Iran for a long long period of time. Uh, that is uh, again has created a lot of hardship on many families because of lack of job and lack of income. That the, the current government cannot provide that the private sector has been not very uh, uh, forthcoming in creating job yet uh, because of the uncertainty in the mind of some. And the investment obviously has declined. So there's, and, and another reason for this migration, obviously some are been helped and encouraged by many different groups to move. Uh, out of Afghanistan, uh, in, uh, uh, whether it's the United States government or those uh, proxy groups within uh, this country in Europe have also been instrumental in trying to get some people, based on the explanation that I was given, that uh, one of the reasons for brain drain has been because the encouragement by Western uh, countries uh, to allow these people uh, a speedy uh, exit from Afghanistan, and that has created some degree of uh, uh, at least uh, a brain, brain issue within, uh, uh, within certain uh, ministries. Hmm. Well, uh, Dr. Mayrabi is a member of the Central Bank of Afghanistan, co-chair of the Board of Trustees of the Fund for Afghan People, and a professor of economics at Montgomery College here in suburban Maryland. Uh, really, uh, thank you for uh, joining us. Thank you very much for inviting me. Good talking to you. So what do you what do you make of that? It 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 feels like so he so so he's in anyway what what's <laughs> I don't want to get ahead of my skis here. What do you think? I think it's really tough because there's a humanitarian crisis that our uh, military operation in Afghanistan uh, absolutely our botched military uh, engagement in Afghanistan over the last at least five years, if not more. Uh, exacerbated, and then our, our Bosch exit exacerbated. Uh, at the same time, 
I think it is true that an empowered Taliban will be an empowered hostile power uh, that is oppressive to its own people. And the reports about how the Taliban, um, and, and not just in Western media, but the reports about how the Taliban is uh, treating political dissidents, and treating women, um, are harrowing. And so I understand why the Biden administration is hesitant in this case. But even though this isn't humanitarian aid, a, a stable functioning economy is a humanitarian cause. Um, yeah. uh, so it, it's inc incredibly difficult. It's an incredibly difficult situation uh, all the way around. And the way that we handled our uh, military engagement in Afghanistan is, is how we got here. Yeah, to, to me, I just feel like it's not, it's not our business. Like it, that I'm glad that we're returning the, the central bank funds, if I think if the Taliban shows any signs that they're going to harbor Al Qaeda terrorists who are going to attack us, like like happened on 9/11, then I, then I think it become it very much becomes our business. But if if the if the Taliban is uh, you know is governing in a way that uh, offends our sensibilities. Um, we have ways that we can, yeah. you know, pressure that. We can, uh, we can, like, you know, s the ways that an empire does. We can tell the World Bank we want, want to put pressure there. Yeah. And it seems like actually some of that is working. Like, if if what if they said true, yeah. to to uh, Shami Rabi is correct, that they're planning on building uh, girls' schools, that the way that they're getting around uh, their their queasiness around uh, that sexism is that they're going to do separate but equal schools. Yeah. Um, then, okay, uh, like that's better than that's better than no schools. And 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 is it is it worth a twenty year occupation? Right. Well, right. yeah, exactly. And that's that's the key question. And you get into obviously Al Qaeda um, ter harboring terrorists, aiding and abetting terrorists is our business because there are no borders anymore, essentially in this world where you can attack a, a country as a foreign power, not just a rogue agent. You can attack a, a foreign country. Um, without a military uh, occupation. You can fly planes into buildings. You can uh, do like terrorism on the ground in another country um, without having to have some giant military operation or anything like that. So that does become our business. And I think there's a serious concern that uh, the Taliban will posture to get money um, and to, to sort of get all of that situated and then turn um, and, and we don't see any of the promises fulfilled when it comes to anything else. I don't know the answer to that question. I think it is a real concern. Um, I don't think, though, that the money that we froze uh, is, I think the, the right thing to do is obviously unfreeze the funds um, in this case, given, given the way that we ended up in this situation with the funds. It reminds me a little bit of uh, when I, I went to uh, Vietnam mm -hmm. in the mid-2000s. So this would have been... 30 years after we left, uh, we're booted out. Yeah. And I remember looking around, it's, there's co you know, giant like uh, lit up uh, corporate signs yeah. all over their central squares. And like, I remember thinking like, what was this for? Mm -hmm. And, and the, 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 the most frightening thing is all, all the trees were the same height and they looked about 30 years old. Yeah. Like we had just, we just completely, completely denuded uh, the land, top to bottom. Uh, and for what? We lost. Viet Cong took over. And they got a functioning con country. Is it the, the exact country that we would have liked? Hmm. Maybe, maybe not. Although the right-wing brutal dictatorship that we were propping up, uh, you know, pro might not have, uh, you know, done, might not have done any better by the Vietnamese people. But even if they, even if they would, like, what was it for? All those American lives, all those Vietnamese lives, all those Afghan lives, what for? If if the well, Taliban is going to take control of the country, and is going to deliver services in a way that 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 Kabul is stable and that there's and and people are no longer worried about getting their doors kicked in. I, a clip of us went viral one time of uh, you saying something like we, we were talking about this last week, but the what we were talking about is a tweet that Ilhan Omar had said something Ilhan Omar had said, and you said like, "Well, wait until you find out who funded the Taliban." Right. And the answer to that is like. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> At the same time that all of this is is going down, I think I agreed with it at the time, although some people cut the clip no, those, those uh, without liberal. my you agreement. You can't trust those liberals. <laughs> yeah, with those, those clips. Uh, <laughs> without, without my agreement. Um, but that's the 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 same thing. It's like we have so much culpability in the suffering 
um, of these people. And that does not mean that their own bad leaders don't share in some of the culpability of those problems. It doesn't mean that America should be dismissed as a force for good, anything like that. It doesn't mean that, but it does mean that we do share culpability in what happened. Um, yeah. And Afghanistan and Vietnam both are clear examples of that. Yeah, and our, our seizure of those funds has led to people starving to death. Like the, the people that he talked about outside the bakery be, uh, begging for food, like that is a that is a direct result of basically seizing what was the Federal Reserve. We built their Central Bank of Afghanistan and then we shut it down and their economy completely collapsed. Prices went absolutely through the roof. Nobody had cash. People's paychecks weren't, uh, people weren't getting paid who were going to work. Every, things shut down and, and people, were, people were selling kidneys, uh, you know, selling furniture, burning furniture to stay warm. Just uh, absolutely bleak a situation that was a, a man-made uh, economic crisis, and so I'm glad that this money is is starting to flow, and we'll we'll, we'll see if it, it brings about any you know good behavior on behalf of the Taliban, but at least hopefully it can get some bread in the hands of people who are starving. I mean, as of a few years ago, the Washington Post was reporting that CIA produced textbooks were still in use in Afghanistan that were uh, encouraging uh, particular ideology uh, in Afghanistan. Uh, uh, it's still in circulation. <laughs> they went and, well. Taliban likes those ones. Yeah, they no, went, that's they exactly it. And, they went yeah. back and got them. Yeah, yeah. still in circulation. So yeah, great work, CIA. Yeah, exactly. They just got a wellness a chief wellness officer, first one. So that yeah. should help. Yeah. So that so that'll be good. <laughs> anyway, so next week we'll be here a couple times filling in for Crystal and Sagar because they'll be doing their live shows as they remind right. as they remind you of right. They're on here, tour. You don't, you don't miss that. Uh, we'll be here, what, Tuesday and Thursday? Something like that. I think. Who knows? Okay. So <laughs> Counterpoints Tuesday, Counterpoints Thursday. This was Counterpoints Friday. That's right. Hope yeah. everybody has a great weekend. Yeah. Have a good weekend. Hey, guys. Ready or not, 2024 is fully upon us now, and Sagar and I have been brainstorming ways that we can really up our game for this critical election. Yeah. We rely on our premium subs to expand our coverage, to add staff, to upgrade the studio. We just want to give you the best independent coverage of this election, which is possible. So if you can help us out, become a premium subscriber today, breakingpoints.com, or the link is down here in the description video. It really means the world to us, and if you like what we're all about, this is the best possible way to keep us 100 percent independent working only for you.